Welcome everybody to the next in our ongoing series of Vernon CMS webinars. Today we'll be looking at user-created symbolic fields. These are fields which perform an immediate calculation on your data to do a variety of tasks. And you can create these symbolic or calculated fields in any of the major files within Vernon, and you can create an unlimited number of these. There's a variety of different ways in which these might be used. We might use it to extract specific rows of information from one table of the catalog record. You might use it to reformat some of the existing information for presentation in another system, including our Vernon Browser Online Collection module. You might perform basic maths or calculations. You might have static data that you're wanting to generate which you want to be the same for every record in a report. And then lastly, you can pull in information from related tables into the current one you're working on to make it easier to report on. Today, we'll be covering examples of all of these options. The user symbolic screen can be accessed by system supervisors, and that's available through the main tools menu under System Maintenance, User-Defined Parameters, User Symbolics. Within that screen, we can then set up calculated or symbolic fields on each of the major files. So here I'm working on the object file. If I wanted to create a brand new user symbolic, I can do that by clicking on the New button. Each symbolic has a name, which is the label that that field will appear as within List Manager and reporting in the future. So let's first create just a simple user symbolic where we pull in information from a record that's related to an object. I'll create a user symbolic where I'm taking the association person and I'm pulling in their address dis display. So I'll just call that association person address display. And by default, it's set to be a simple symbolic. We now just have to describe where is this information that we're wanting to pull out. So this information is going to be stored on a person record. So I pick the person file. The field that I'm wanting to report on from the related person file will be the address display field. And the field that joins together the object catalog record to where this information is will be the association person field in this case. Or well, that's associated person, I assume. Let's correct that and our label as well. On the left-hand side, we've, we can see we've already got a catalog record open. If I open up the subject and association page, we can see that this particular record does indeed link to an associated person. So this was a painting that was done of our Vernon Systems office. And so we've linked Vernon Systems Limited as an associated person. On the user symbolic screen, you can test things as you create them to make sure that they're working how you expect. So I could test this on the right hand side using the sample record box. So let's just search for that catalog record we've been checking that on. So I could do any kind of simple search there, including on the accession number. And then I can use the calculate button to check how that's working. So there we can immediately see we are correctly getting the, the associated person's address. So I could save those changes. And then I can make use of that from then on in the system as if it was a real field where I entered the information directly into an object record. So on this catalog record, for instance, I could now run a report. 
I could create a new report template and I could select some fields. If you create a new user symbolic field, it's automatically added to the end of the available display fields. If I scroll to the bottom then, we have that new field that I've just created. And behind the scenes, Vernon knows what calculation to perform to work out the data to display. So I could run that report just on that one example record with my new field and send that report to the screen. And then we have our new field available and embeddable within any object report, within List Manager, and in a variety of output mechanisms through the reporting module as well. So we could publish this data to another application, to a PDF report, or to Vernon Browser. So that's an example of a simple symbolic. We'll look at some other examples now. So let's open up that user symbolic screen again. For those simple user symbolics, we can also override the default display format for any field that we're pulling in. I've pre-created a range of different symbolic fields which we'll go through in this webinar. And the first that we'll have a look at is a material simple name symbolic. This works very similar to the one we just did for associated person address. In this case, the information that we're wanting to pull out is stored in the object record. And it's the media material field of the record we're currently looking at. So the thing that connects those uh, pieces of information together is just the system ID of the current record. So let's search for the fan bars, for instance. We can see that the medium material field has been filled in for this record, and it's using the art and architecture thesaurus. That has a very detailed material keyword hierarchy. We can see here that ceramic is underneath ceramic products, which is underneath clay products, and so on. There may be some places where you're wanting to publish that material keyword where that whole hierarchy is excessive. You may just want the simple name of just ceramic. So I can create a calculated field which just gets the data from the current record using the ID, and then I can override what we call the output conversion. So Vernon has a link to that material authority term using the ID of the material and you can override the display of that. So this is a little bit of code in Vernon that's telling it to do an authority file conversion using records in the material file. And we can override those options to pick a different display field. So I can say, well, instead of using the hierarchy, which is the, the default display, just use the authority term name, which is the field AU name. And so again, we can test that using the sample record field. And we can see now, instead of seeing that whole hierarchy, we've got a new field that reformats the material keyword field just to show the authority name and not the whole hierarchy. And once again, once I save that option in the user symbolic screen, I've got that available elsewhere in the system. Another example that you might do is pulling in a very specific piece of related information from a related authority record. I've got some natural science specimens in this example, uh, kindly given to us as sample catalog records from Queensland Museum. So I'll bring up one of the bee fly records. If we look on the second page, we can see that's linked to a Linnaean or natural science Latin classification. That particular name isn't necessarily going to be meaningful as a layperson looking at the online collection. So if I go to the related 
authority term record, we can see that we've recorded a long or common name for that. So rather than the Latin name, we also know what the English term for that particular species is. So it's known as a bee fly. That might be a field that would be useful to include in object reports. So we're not actually entering the information bee fly as a field within the object record, but it is available as connected information on the related classification record. So let's set up a symbolic field that pulls in that related long name. So I've already got that set up again as another existing symbolic. So classification long name is what I've called that. And that again works in a much similar way to the material example and to the address example. So we're saying that we're taking data that's in a related file, in this case from the classification file where our authority terms are stored, and we're going to report on the long name field, which is where we saw that text B fly. And then lastly, we're connecting that back to the object record using its classification field. And now we can test that on the same record that we've got over on the left-hand panel. And we can see we've now got that data available as something that's in the object report. And that's something which we really would want to publish to the online collection site because it means people can search for those natural science specimens using their common names. So as well as the simple symbolics where we're just taking data that's already stored in Vernon and just pulling it into a different place, maybe doing some minor reformatting, we can also use what we call complex symbolics, which run some kind of code to manipulate the data in further ways. A simple example would be just to take a specific row from any one of the tables that we see within a catalog record. There's many different tables and often there'll be multiple different entries. And you may have a specific report that you're wanting to produce where you don't want all of those entries. You want only ones of a specific type. So if I look at an example record where I've got multiple different other identifiers. This is a piece of ceramic ware, and we can see on the second page that we've got both a catalogue number and a design number. We may want to have a report where we position the design number in a specific place on the page, and to do that we'd need to pull out just that row of information so that it's its own reporting field and then you've got more control over how it's formatted and where it's positioned within the report. So we can do that again with a symbolic, but in this case it's a complex symbolic to do the bit of logic where we're saying that we're only looking for types of design number. If I look at that field, there's a whole set of different other ID types. So that's an authority controlled field to make sure we've got consistent data there. And each of those terms has a permanent unique ID that's specific to that other ID type. And so if I look for design number, we can see that that's got a permanent code on the right, an ID of DN, so short for design number. In most cases, that'll just be a numeric ID, but Vernon does support alphabetic IDs where there's a short list of terms. So I can now set up the code to pull out just other IDs where the type is DN for design number. And so if I click on design number, which I've already got set up, again, I've created a label, which is just going to read design number but this time I've marked it as being a complex symbolic. There's a number of pre-built programs in Vernon CMS to handle common requests that we've had for reformatting or manipulating data. The main program is user sim subroutine, so that's what most often we're going to be using. And then it supports a whole range of little programming arguments that tell the program 
what different options you're wanting to make use of. In this case, I'm making use of an argument which we call extract AMV. AMV is short for a set of associated multi-values, which other ideas. So we've got three columns of multiple values which are all associated with each other. An other ID is always associated with another ID type, for instance. And so we're going to extract one row from that set of associated multi-values. The next part of the argument says, where is the field that you're wanting to look for to extract particular rows? So we're going to look in just the other ID type field, and we're going to look for a specific term name. And so DN is the ID that we're looking for. And then in the last attribute is the field that we want to display. So if it finds a matching other ID type, we want it to display the associated other ID field. And so that's now all in place. And we could bring up that record. And so now we have a new reporting field where we can pull out just that other ID that we saw on the second row. So that concept could be used in any table that you have within Vernon where you've got a column that creates some kind of subset of those. So production role, other ID type, other name type are all similar examples where you might use the extract AMV function. So now we'll go through a range of other complex symbolic types that we could make use of. All of this is documented in our online help. So if I switch to our browser, our online help is available through Vernon CMS help, vernonsystems.com. And the user symbolic help is available under the advanced topic section. So here we can see user symbolics as a section. And it splits that into separate categories of help for user symbolics that are simple ones and ones that are complex. If I go into the simple user symbolics page, it will cover all of the steps that we just did for things like that address display example. So here's an example that's very similar where for the maker, we're pulling out information from the web address field. So that would cover examples where an artist might have a website which was recorded on their uh, person record and you want to include that website reference in an object report. If we look at user symbolics un under the complex example, that describes the different subroutine names that we've got available. And then it goes into detail about what are the different options that each of those provides. So it is a little bit of coding at this level, and it's something where we always give direct assistance to each client. So if you've got something that you're wanting to achieve with user symbolics, get in touch with us, and we can help you make use of these functions. So if I looked at the user sim subroutine option for extract AMV, so we can see all of the different options that it uh, allows on the left navigation here. It will give us a breakdown of the syntax that it uses. So it just has an exclamation mark between each piece of information it needs. And that just covers the initial argument saying it's going to be extract AMV and then the other details like the internal field name to look at with the code that we're looking at and then the internal name of the display field plus a number of other optional settings which we didn't make use of in that example. I'll switch back to Vernon now and we'll look at some other examples that we could make use of that are complex symbolics. As well as extracting subsets of information, we can also combine multiple fields together to make one new reformatted set of information which joins those things together. A very typical example would be to join the artist and the role fields together because you might be outputting that to some other system like Excel where it can't cope with the concept of multiple repeating entries. In Excel, each record is just a single row and you can't have embedded cells within a single row. 
So you might choose to reformat the artist and role information to already be joined together in a tidy display before it ever gets out of the system. So if I look at the artist and role example, and I'll just find a, an object record where I know that I've got multiple makers. In this case, I've said to use the multi-field option. That then asks me to list which of the fields that I'm combining. And then it asks me for the punctuation that I'm using to separate the pieces of information. So I've said to use a space and a dash between the different columns and then a carriage would return and line feed. So basically skipping to the next line between each row of information. If I bring up that particular record, we can see how I found out those particular field names so that I could write this complex user symbolic. I did that by clicking in the field and then Vernon has Alt F1 to show you database information. So that's showing you the actual column internal name that Vernon's writing that information to in the back end. So not just the display label that we're seeing in the user interface, but the unique permanent identifier for that column. So I'm going to press Alt F1 now, and we can see for this table that it has two columns which is prod pry person for the primary production person and prod pry role for the maker's role. And that's the information I'm going to need as part of the setup. And so I'll fill that in now on the right and I could test that out. If I click on calculate, I've created a single text field which has combined the display of the person's name with their role on a single line and then skipping to the next line with the next row of information from the maker and role field. So that's a very common way of combining multiple columns together so that you've got a single set of text to work with in some other application. That's also useful when creating word merges in Vernon because again, Word doesn't have a concept of embedded subtables, and that can make it difficult to work with repeating sets of information within a single catalog record. The next example I'll show is some simple maths to do a total on a field. You might be wanting to identify all the records that you have where multiple makers were involved as in this particular example record. I'll scroll to the end and I've set up an example symbolic which does a count on the artist field. So I'll click on that and I've just called that artist count. Again, that's one of the built-in options as part of user sim subroutine and it's just using the value count option. So it's doing a count of the number of entries in a particular field. So this is looking at the number of entries in the same prod pry person field. It then has some options for what we're counting, either value marks or text marks if you're wanting to count the number of paragraphs, for instance, within a formatted text field. So I could run that symbolic on the same field and I should get a total of two. I could make use of that now in a search in Vernon. So that's something I could do statistics on, I could total on in a report, but in this case, if I'm wanting to find all of the records that have multiple makers, I could actually search on that field, just looking for all of the entries where that calculation is greater than one. So let's do that. We can see on the left here, every individual symbolic field ends up with its own permanent database field name, and that's something that we can reference in other symbolics we build up, and we can reference it in searches. So this particular field for artist count is permanently called user sim 39 in the database. So I could switch to an object screen, and I could use an advanced search to actually look up that field. 
The search fields on the right are just the pre-built permanent fields in Vernon. So to make use of this new symbolic field, I have to use what we call a select statement. So that's a command-driven search where we can do more complex searches than are available by default within the user interface. So in this case, I could do a simple search where I just say, I want all the ones with user sim 39 being greater than one. So basically everything where my artist count calculation comes back with a number that's two or more. And that's found 10 records. And I could click on finish. And we've got the record that we were just looking at as well as a range of other records. So mostly the books where we've recorded both the author and perhaps editors and or illustrators. Another thing that we can use a complex user symbolic for is pulling out just one level of a hierarchy within a term field. So that could be, for instance, within the place field. When you're cataloging records, you'll be wanting to be as specific as possible for things like production place. You won't be referencing just a country most of the time. However, in a report, you may want a, a display field specifically for production country, and you could use a symbolic field to calculate the country from the whole hierarchy. So let's find an example where we've got a production place. And I know I've recorded that for some of my ceramics. So that's just New Zealand. Let's see if we can find something that's more specific than that. Like I did with that symbolic search, I can just search for things like everything that's got a primary production place. And so there's an example where it's been catalogued at city level within a state, within a country. So let's use that record, number 231, as my example. I'll search for that on the right as my sample record. And so in this case, we're using a specific subroutine name that deals with hierarchies. And so that's called AU for authority uses some hierarchy. And the options it's taking are either the field number or the field name. Some options as to whether it deals with all rows in that table or just the first one. The name of the related authority file. So this information is in our place authority file. The level that we're looking for. So I'm looking for level of nation. And again, that's just a term list where we could look that up on the related place file. And then what's the field we're wanting to pull out. So I'm full of pulling out the ID of that related term. And then like we did earlier with the materials, I'm then just showing the name of that term. So now I can calculate that and I've got a field that for any record in the system can traverse up that hierarchy until it finds the level of nation and then display just the name of that country. And then that's available as something that we could search on, something that we could sort on as well. So within list manager, you might sort all of your records so they're ordered by production country. One of the most common uses of complex user symbolics is for output to our online collection product, Vernon Browser. So often you're wanting to change the presentation of information or pull in details from other files for presentation on the online collection site. So I'm gonna show you a set of examples from specific online collection sites, and then we can see how they've been set up in the background as calculated fields in the user symbolic screen. So the first example is on the MOTAT Museum of Transport and Technology website. As part of their online collection, they have a credit line field. Vernon has a credit line field where you'd be hand entering 
credit lines, but in the case of MOTAT, they need to automatically generate a standard piece of credit line text. And for them, that's just simply the object name, the accession number, and the name of their organization. And so we can see those three things joined together. You ideally don't want to have to hand enter that into the credit line field of every catalog record. That's both repetition, but it's also problematic if the other information changes at any point. So for instance, if somebody fixed a typing mistake in the name field, they'd have to remember to also do that work in the credit line. So rather than entering that information in the credit line, for MOTAP, we've set up a user symbolic just using that multi-fields option to say, take three different fields and join that information together. So let's switch back to Vernon and we'll see how that's set up in practice. We're doing two different things to make that possible. Firstly, the organization name, MOTAT in their case, or Vernon Systems Limited for us, is going to be the same in every single credit line. So there is a user symbolic type, which is just called fixed literal, where it's one block of text, which will be the same for every single record whenever you make use of that field. And so I've got a fixed literal, which shows our company name, Vernon Systems Limited. And no matter which record I calculate that on, it's always going to be the same text. I can then make use of that symbolic field when I use the multi-field option to join together the name and the accession number and the standard piece of text. And so I've done that in the next symbolic field, which I've called Vernon Systems Credit Line. And we can see that's again using a multi-field option, like we did with Artist and Roll earlier. And it's taking the name field, the accession field, and we can reference any other calculated field we've set that up uh, for. So these symbolic fields can be stacked together over time. You might manipulate one piece of information with one user symbolic, and then you might reference that later in an even more complex example. So user sim 37 was this one. So now if I calculate that information, I get that standard credit line, and that's automatically generated, and it's live. So Vim's not storing that information, just whenever we want to report on that field, it's recalculating it. So that information is always going to be correct, even if things like the name get edited at a later point. So that's the first example of one being used within the online collection site. Another example would be if you want clickable links. As part of your cataloging information, you might have recorded external web pages which are useful reference material relating back to a particular object or a particular person. Here we've got a colour box, a film that was made by the New Zealand artist Len Lai. As part of that record, I've got public web links, which are two clickable links. So when I hover over those, we can see at the bottom left of our browser, the web link that that would go to. So for instance, if I click on read about Len Lai on Wikipedia, that would open up that related link. So if we go back to Vernon, we can see how we've constructed that. I'll first open up the Len Lai record so we can see where that information was actually entered. Within any of our major files, you can record links to external files or web pages, and that's done through the document references page. And so here's that information that the website was relying on. The external file column has the web link, and then the notes column has been used to create the display text that the end visitor will actually see on that web page. So often a link itself isn't going to be humanly readable. And so the notes field in this table has been used so you can create 
a human readable piece of text to go with that link. Lastly, this table might be used for a range of different references, not all of which are publicly accessible. You might have links to acquisition documents, for instance, which are internal PDF or Word documents. And so we're making use of the extract AMV option to extract only the rows from this table where I've marked the category as being a public web link. So that's similar to the concept that we used earlier of other ID. I'm looking for rows where there's a particular category code, in this case, category code number one for public web link. So now we can have a look on the right hand side and see how that's set up. I could also use the database information field and those are the three database columns that are being used in that table. And we're going to need to refer to those when we construct our user symbolics. So we're going to need the DDE file name and DDE notes. So first we want to pull out all of the URLs or links. And so that's using the same extract AMV option that we saw before. And like other ID, it's just simply a case of saying what field are we filtering on? So we're filtering on the category column for all things which were category code one. And if it's found, display the file name. And so if we pick the color box, we can see now we've got a, a field which is a filtered set of links where it's only the public ones. So if that table had other references in it, we would already be filtering those out. And then we've done exactly the same concept to pull out the notes column. And there's my two notes. And then lastly, I'm using the multi-field option to join all of that information together. So the browser expects this to be a combined field where we've got the link together with the notes and it's generating the text in the last step. So it's joining together those two previous symbolic numbers, 28 and 29. And so it's just joining those together so that we've got on a single line, the link, a vertical bar and the notes. And that's just a standard format that Vernon Browser supports for links that include associated text. I'll switch back now to another example. So Google Maps is a, a format that Vernon CMS can export data to. It, each individual object record through the field collection page can include a map reference, which is a latitude longitude position. And then Google Maps expects a name field, a description field, and a position as part of the data for plotting that on the map. You might not necessarily have one single description field which is useful on the map. You may want to use instead the multi-fields option to combine together several pieces of information for displaying that on each map pin. So if I click on one of those map pins, we can see we've got the name, which is the, the species and subspecies, but we've then got this description field. And that's the description field that doesn't exist as a single field in Vernon, unless we create a symbolic field to join different pieces of information together. So let's take that object accession number and we can test out the symbolic that I made back in Vernon. And so then if we look through the user symbolics that I have, I've got a map pin description, and that's one of the fields that I'm publishing to Google Maps. And there we can see that's the information it's pulling out. So it's pulling out the taxonomic family, the common name, and the object accession number, and it's joining that together as one single description field. The last example I'll show is pulling out more information from document references 
but where that's pointing to some kind of rich content on the internet. If we go back to the Len Lai example, we can see that that category column is an authority term field. And we've just got basic examples of private and public links. You can create other types to indicate that there's a special type of content at the end of that link. And one example would be Sketchfab. Sketchfab is an international platform for storing 3D models of objects. Each of those pages is a permanent page for that particular 3D model, and that can be referenced just through a web link. So we've got some sites that have created a file category for Sketchfab, and then they're just storing a web link to that particular Sketchfab 3D model. That's something where Vernon Browser can support Sketchfab and a number of other rich content types to not just display a link, but actually embed some kind of interactive content. So this is another example of one of our Vernon Browser sites. And this is a site that has been uploading 3D models to Sketchfab. And then they've been storing those links in the document references page with a category of Sketchfab. And using exactly the same logic we did for those clickable links before, they're publishing a field which has only the Sketchfab links and the browser can then do something special with those. If it detects that one of those Sketchfab links has been published for the current record, we're automatically embedding this 3D button and we're automatically embedding Sketchfab's 3D model player so in real time, we're looking up that web page and we're bringing in that 3D model. And so that's something we can do whenever there's third party content where they've got a 3D or audio or video player that we could embed within our own website. So things like SoundCloud audio files, Vimeo or YouTube video files are all examples where that content is just stored on a web page and that particular provider already has a player that you can embed in other places. So now I've got a 3D model of that particular albatross specimen. And in Sketchfab, you can do things like annotate those models. So they've, for instance, added notes about particular attributes of the albatross in this case. So that covers a whole range of different ways in which user symbolic fields are used. Thanks everyone, enjoy the rest of your day.